beast, didn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm out in the workshop, beavering away, making rigs, doing what I enjoy. If I can't fish, then I'm prepping to go fishing. And what I'm using today, or what I'm looking at, what I'm gonna share and we're gonna make, is a loop rig. <laughs> now I've made this one particularly light, so I've chosen a light main body, light hook snoods, and small hooks. I'm using Camasan B940s, B940s, and their size four hooks. It's a scratching rig, but it's a scratching rig with a difference. So all clipped down, all under tension with an SRT spring at the business end, at the casting clip on end. I'm using a plain flat lead for the purposes of today, and everything's tucked into an imp. And the thing that makes this rig different is the cascade swivel. And the cascade swivel links the top snood with a long bottom snood. So when it hits the water and everything disconnects, you end up with a long flowing trace, light line, wafty wafty, doing all its stuff. A lead that sits on the bottom and the snood that comes off it is a long snood with the cascade swivel, which helps to weight it, and it's positioned high enough above it that a nice worm bait can go on. Or if it's a smaller bait, squid or mackerel or something like that, it helps to nail that to the bottom. It will still get carried in the tide, but then it will lay that bait firmly on the bottom. And as always, easier to clip up once it's hung up. Top tip for when you're doing this on your on the beach to put it on the rod tip, put the rod tip high and just link the bottom hook into the imp. We've talked about the two methods of connecting up an imp, either captive or loose, depending on whether you put it through the front or the back. And there's the loop. So the loop is quite, is considerably long, about 18, 20 inches. You can make that loop as long as you like. That loop could be four foot long if you like, if you're willing to have two foot of loop just wafting around in the breeze. The only downside this rig is the longer the loop, the lighter the winds you need. This is not a storm beach rig. Even though it all clips up, if you use a small loop, you might get away with it. But if you're going to like a, um, a really exposed mark and you're gonna use a loop rig, you want to keep that loop fairly short. So I'm going to move that out of the way and give myself a reference. Excuse my back, please. Um, so, without any further discussions, I suppose really what I need to do is get on and make it. <laughs> what if I don't like it? So, for the rig body itself, I'm using ASO Ultraflex. I'm using 60 pound. Very conscious decision on 60 pounds. So the weights that I'm using, the breakaway flat leads, they only make them in three and five ounces. They don't make a four. I don't know why that is. Um, three and five ounces, five ounces. You go an ounce per um, 10 pound of line plus 10 pound safety margin. So if I'm casting a five ounce flat lead, 60 pound main line. So the main line is the first part. Already cut to length, and to give a rough idea, I'm not going super accurate on these. It's about four foot long. It's not going to stay four foot long, obviously, because I'm going to tie some knots on it. Um, right at the bottom, so that I can load components, I'm going to tie an imp. I'm going to take three turns around the main line, put it through the initial loop as if it was a blood knot, and then instead of single clench, triple clench. Moisten knots and pull down. Sight the knot, make sure it's seated. Should look like a little beehive. And Solingen nail clippers. Very sharp and stay sharp and last a long time. So all we've got now is our main body with an imp. And to that, I'm gonna thread 
a series of components, put all the components on, captive the end with a swivel, and then we'll lay them out. So first to go on, and unusually for me, I'm not too keen to be honest, a crimp, a crimp, and my little sausage fingers are struggling already, <laughs> a four mil bead. And don't panic if you can't see exactly what's going on at the moment, because I will show it to camera in a minute. A 45 pound Gemini snood swivel. Someone's decided to um, saw loads of wood up. Mm. And a four mil bead. I tell you what, my fingers are getting clumsier with age. They really are struggling a little bit. And a crimp. And that will all end up being held captive at the bottom. So those are the bottom components. Let's have a look, see if we can get this right in focus. My camera focus has been playing up lately. Let's see if we can get this right in. Oh, focus, focus, hiddly focus. Here we go then. So we've got an imp, a crimp, a four mil bead, a 45 pound snood swivel, a four mil bead and a crimp. And at the moment, they're all loose. Nothing's clipped down. Get the focus. Why my autofocus isn't working at the moment, I have no idea. But it's playing up. And we'll thread some more components on. So we need a four mil bead. And it's fighting me, hence the pause. And an SRT spring. SRT springs are an amazing little bit of kit. When they come out with that idea to start with, they're so flexible in their use and very clever that someone actually thought that out. A four mil bead, a 45 pound hook, snood, or a 45 pound snood swivel, a four mil bead, and that is almost all of our components. In fact, that is all the components threaded onto the line. The only thing that needs to be done now is for them to be arranged. But to keep them all captive and to make sure that now after all that hard work, I don't just drop them and they all fall off. I'm using one of the Gemini stainless steel 140 pound swivels. Two, three. And I know what you're thinking. You think, oh, 145 40 pound, that's a bit strong. I just like the size of them. They're that strong, even though they're that size. So I've got them because they're stainless steel and small. They just happen to be 140 pounds. Set the knot, check the setting, little beehive. Snip the tag end and we're there. So that is all of the components loaded and we'll go for the focusing on the camera game again, just because. <laughs> right, so we've got an imp, a crimp, four mil bead, snood swivel, bead, crimp, bead, SRT spring, bead, snood swivel, and a bead. It's like the generation game, isn't it? And they're all free running at the moment, so we need to sort of sort out what we're going to do with those. Let's get our in focus. There we go. We're focused. We're back in the room. Okay, so the first job is to crimp the bottom set of, uh, bottom set of beads that are either side of that snood swivel. And I'm using a proper set of crimps and these are fox crimps, fox crimping tool. In the correct size, there's two different options. You can crimp two different size beads with these. Make sure I haven't got the line trapped or anything like that. Just a light crimp. And then making sure that the beads can still move. We're not trying to crimp this tight. And that the swivel can still maneuver itself around. Um, about an inch up from the imp. I'm just going to connect a weight just to make it easier to work with. And you're probably wondering why I'm using an imp and a breakaway lead. 
is because it gives me options. It gives me options um, and it's possible to change the, uh, the method that, which are, that when we're casting. So the next thing we need to do is to tie a stop knot. And I'm notoriously famous for not being able to tie a stop knot whilst it's on the spool. I can only tie it when I've cut myself a length, which means you end up with wastage. Um, two, three, three turns, a big loop back to the start position. And then three turns through again. One, two, three. Snug it all down. When it starts to get close to being snug, make sure that it's moistened. And then pull both tag ends so that the knot seats down on itself. And then clip off the tag end loose pieces. They don't have to be that tight actually. They can have a little bit of a tag to them. And what we can do then is that makes that all adjustable, but it helps if you do the hook snood now. So for the hook snoods themselves, I'm only using 12 pound amnesia, which as we all know, is a lot lighter than what I would normally use. But this is, this is a scratching rig. So it's just tying onto that up a snood swivel and the part of this that I'm really concentrating on is the lightness small components I know you could use continental style glue in and and go even lighter than what I'm going but if I'm completely honest I'm too clumsy for that kind of stuff um, and out on the beach in all weathers um, this is about as light as I'd like to go. I, I like to stay quite robust when it's out on the out on the beach. Um, I can't be doing with you know, like tangles and and uh, all the other aspects that go with the really light stuff. I know it catches a lot of smaller species and people really bag up on that kind of stuff. That's not really the kind of fishing I enjoy. That's not really what I'm into. Someone's deliberately making some noise out there. I say deliberately, they're not deliberately making noise for noise's sake, but... <laughs> out in the background. Someone's having a job in the garden. So all I've done there Is cut myself about 30 inches of 12 pound amnesia, attached it to the hook snood that's above the SLT spring, wet the line, move everything right up out of the way. Give yourself a fighting chance of not getting hooked. And this is possibly the most interesting aspect of this, this film and this rig that we're doing at the moment. Because what we're gonna do now is make the bit that, that gives it its name, the loop. And we're gonna go with 30 inches of amnesia tied onto the bottom snood. Now on these snoods you could use tubing to help kick them away. I'm not on this particular rig. I am going to make another one with tubing just so that I can make a comparison to see if it actually is worthwhile doing or not. Whether it adds any benefit or whether it's just another complication. Um, and this is the bottom snood now so it's already 30 inches long and on the end of that we're going to tie a cascade swivel we've got to be careful about the lay of the cascade swivel so the cascade swivel has a canted top and a standard swivel bottom and a dog leg. You want the dog leg pointing towards the hook. So we're going to attach that to the end of this snood. And like I say, with that dog leg facing towards the hook, all will become clear when you come to clip it up. Because that is the element that's going to captive that dog leg 
will hold the top hook, the hook that's already up top. That's where that hook sits. What we do need now is just a short length of hook snood. I'm going to cut a length of 12 inches, but it won't be that long when it's complete. So all I'm doing now is on the end of that cascade swivel, the piece that looks like a standard swivel end. is I'm tying a short piece of line that's probably going to get trimmed even shorter. Just gives me a piece to work with. Now this piece, I don't like to have it too long. And at the moment, I think if you cut it to about seven inches, to give yourself a maximum of about six inches working at the end. So another one of these Camasan B940s. And I'm just looking at how long I would like it to be. I like to keep this piece fairly short. You can vary this depending on where you're fishing, depending on how you're going to fish. I mean, I want this one nailed to the bottom. I want the top hook to have the opportunity of a bass. And I want this bottom one to be buried right on the bottom. And this cascade swivel will help to weight it and keep it there as well. Okay, so that is the rig complete. Let's have a look to see if we can put it somewhere where we can talk through some of the aspects and why we did what we did. Okay, there we go. So ignoring the hook snoods, we've got a rig body of about three and a half feet. At the top, we've got an SRT spring arrangement between beads and a sliding stop knot. That gives some adjustability to this rig. If anything changes, if anything stretches on the beach, it also gives me the, the opportunity to change what I captive the bottom hook on. I can either keep it on the breakaway lead or I can put it in the imp. And we can put the imp in two different fashions and we'll look at that now. So to clip this rig up, you have to start from the bottom. So it's always better to hang this from your rod. Bait up, you know, next to your bait bucket and all the rest of it, bait up both of your hook snoods. But then this one, the lower one, goes into the imp. And I'm gonna do it in the standard format. With the cascade swivel, with the dog leg pointing down, the top hook snood, the hook, sits in that dog leg. And then this is the time when you get to adjust your rig. So at the moment, I've pretty much fallen lucky. That's good, I like that. That's exactly as it should be. But then when we look at this lower part, you can see that the hook is in. Let's just have a look, see if we can get this in so you can really see this really clearly. There we go, that looks better. The hook is in the imp, and that's in the front of the imp. So when we say there's two ways of being able to keep that captive, that, when it releases, releases that way. What you can do is let the imp fall all the way to the rear and close it. And that is captive. That is even more captive than when it's at the front. It is very difficult for that hook now to fall out, but it still works in the same way. So you can either hook it from the front or hook it from the rear. Choice is yours. But you have a choice. The cascade swivel with its dog leg, and just see if I put it, in fact, if I put it against the black there, see the dog leg on the cascade swivel? That dog leg has to point towards the hook because then, let's just hook this up.
That is what holds the upper hook, he says as he hooks himself. Mm. Just let that take itself under tension. Always better to let the weight do its job. There we go, and move the loop out of the way. So if we show that piece now against the black background, that hook is caught cool on that dog leg. You see that? And that is the cascade. So when that releases, we just unhook it from there, and that imp lets go, it shoots the top snood clear, the bottom will fish well below the weight, even though it's attached above the weight, and the top snood, with the angle back to the rod tip, they should both be touching on the bottom. This is a perfect flounder rig, or that top snood there is perfect if you put one or two floating uh, beads on your bait or on your hook line. That is perfect for bass, just to um, counteract the buoyancy, just to give it a little bit of buoyancy your bait and then give the bass something to find with it floating around in the current a few inches off the bottom. So there it is, loop rigs. There is a million and one ways that you could change that rig. Let's just check, make sure that we're all in focus. There we go. Wow. Um, you can beef that right up. You can beef that right up. You could go 80 pound rig body. You could go 40 or 30 pound amnesia. You could upsize the hooks. This could be a dual ray rig. You could really make this into a, quite a beefy rig for rays. And we're talking thornbacks and undulates. Um, you can make the rig body a little bit longer, the upper snood shorter and fish above just the bottom. So you've got one hard on the bottom and one just above, possibly more enticing towards a bass. There's, there's, this is just the starting point. And what I would love is if you're going to make this rig, if you use this rig, if you use a variation of this rig, then put it in the comments, let us know. What you can do is shorten this snood down and add a third and then put a cascade swivel here with the SRT spring at the top. Um, th there are so many options with this rig. It is a very flexible rig and it fishes really, really well. The fact that it all clips down means it can cast well. Um, your size of the loop is limited really by how windy it is and whether you're gonna get snags. And I like it. We're gonna fish with it. We're going to showcase it for a little while. I'm going to use it as a go-to rig on one rod for a while and, and I'll report back and I'll let you know how I get on. Just clip my weight back on, otherwise that's going to swing around in the wind, in the breeze. There we go. Right, so that's it from me. Please feel free to um, comment, subscribe, like, do all that youtube -y stuff if you like. I do really appreciate it. Long-term followers of the channels, you know, I absolutely love you guys. You're amazing. Interaction, correction. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Um, but yeah, absolute winner. I love this rig. It is a cracking rig. Have a go at it. Try it. Make it yourself. All that's left for me to say is goodbye for now. Tight lines, happy fishing. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.